All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is a webinar from GSU Library Online Services, an introduction to library resources for literary research. My name is Scott Piper. I'm a reference librarian at the Decatur campus. My contact information is there, and feel free to contact me um, after the webinar if you need any more help. Um, and if you'd like to ask questions, please type in the, in the chat box, and we will get to those as we go along. And I am presenting today with my colleague. Hi, I'm Sarah Kirkley, and I'm a librarian at our Clarkston campus. Um, and my contact information is also provided, so please feel free to reach out um, if you have any questions again after the, the webinar today. So today's agenda um, includes some of the following. We're just going to give a brief overview of some kind of need-to-know information about the library, some facts that can kind of uh, help out. Um, we're also going to provide a few options, strategic tips for searching um, as you do research for, um, for an assignment, whether that's gathering uh, literary criticism or looking into uh, more about an author's life through biographical resources. We're going to point you in the right direction for a couple of um, those sources through these databases. Um, so today we're going to cover Bloom's, Gale Literary Sources, JSTOR, a Discover Search, as well as touch on a few other things throughout the presentation. So um, that's what's going to be happening today. All right, so just in general, uh, about the library and about librarians. Um, we're here to help you find information and to use library services. So libraries can be pretty complex organizations with a lot of different uh, resources, a lot of different databases, books, um, uh, you name it. There's a lot of different, uh, a lot of different opportunities uh, for learning, um, and there's a lot of things that can be confusing about all of those, all of those services. Um, so we're here to clear up any, any problems that you have, any um, confusion that might arise as you start studying uh, and uh, trying to find your, your secondary sources for these assignments. So before we dive into some of the um, library resources or subscribed resources, um, through those databases. Uh, I think we should touch on um, maybe why you would even want to navigate to those library resources at all um, when so much is available for free on the open web. So why can't we just gather all those resources and do our research all through Google? Um, and there's a couple of things I'll point to um, and the, the first one being that a lot of the resources that we'll cover today um, are, are uh, behind a paywall. So your tuition dollars go toward subscriptions, towards being able to access a lot of these resources that will be found in academic journals or in scholarly books. Um, that again, you can't just get um, off on a website. Um, so that's one thing um, to know is that there is not everything is not available on Google, even though it might seem like it, right? Like we get so many results. Um, a couple of other things to to be aware of, um, especially with some of the resources that we will look at today, um, they have a more um, academic or scholarly focus. So they're written by scholars and other academics people who are um, subject matter experts. Um, and then they're also, uh, the, our collections are um, more appropriate for the academic context, if that makes sense. So um, when you're doing academic research and you're participating in an academic classroom, um, these sources are more tailored towards that experience. So when you go to some of the literary databases that we will look at, you'll see that they're primarily focused on literary research, and it's actually a little bit easier to use. Um, so yeah, I just we just kind of wanted to broach that topic a little bit because all of us use Google in our daily lives, 
probably multiple times per day um, and just kind of giving some some reasons and some argument for going beyond it, um, especially when you're doing academic research. All right, so let's talk about literary research a little bit. It's going to be a little bit different from uh, the context of a, maybe an 11 on one class that you might have taken earlier where you're writing argumentative papers. Uh, and we just want to define, define a few terms and talk about what the implications of uh, literary research uh, can be. So one of the first things, um, we're going to be talking mostly about secondary um, material, secondary sources, uh, versus your primary source, which is going to be the actual work you're looking at. So the primary source is going to be the play you're analyzing, or the poem, um, or the novel. Um, uh, so those are the primary, and then your secondary sources are going to be articles um, and books and literary criticism written about those primary resources. Okay, so we're going to be focusing on the secondary research or the secondary uh, type of source. Um, so literary criticism is something we'll be mentioning throughout, um, and basically you're you're moving beyond summaries, you're moving beyond the book report kind of format that you might have done years and years ago. You're placing the work that you're studying in a literary context uh, or a historical context. Uh, you might be analyzing it in the context of a literary movement or with literary devi devices. So it's more of evaluation and interpretation um, uh, of, your, of your primary uh, source and becoming and being a part of the conversation as you, what you're entering in into the secondary literature about, uh, about your primary work. Um, so we'll be talking about databases, of course, as Sarah mentioned earlier, um, and we'll be starting right now to show you some, to talk about some search tips as you start searching some of these databases. So search tip number one um, is about the author's uh, the first thing is about the author's name, using the name as a search term. Um, there's some formats that might help. You can use it in the regular uh, first, first name, last name order. You might also use last name, comma, first name. You could use, uh, use it in the context of a search phrase, uh, like it has on the screen, Maya and Angelou. Most of the databases these days are pretty flexible with this uh, formatting change. Um, but you might notice some changes, so you might want to, as far as your search results, when you try um, different formats as far as uh, word order and the names. Um, using an author's name, we'll also talk about that in just a second uh, in another context, um, but also using the name of the work. Um, and that makes sense, of course. Um, but what you want to make sure you do, uh, it was actually very helpful, is use quotes. Around the around the phrase, so as it says in the example, as you like it, when you put that together, when you surround that in quotes, that will keep that phrase in that word order. So you will keep that as you like it as your search, which can be very helpful um, when you're searching the name of a work. You can also add the word criticism as a search term. Uh, most of these databases are designed um, using criticism as a identifier with these critical analyses that you're looking for. So when you add criticism as a search term, you are getting those uh, cr uh, literary criticism articles um, as opposed to something that might be a summary or a biography. Um, you're getting those, those good analysis articles. You can also talk about broader topics in your in your um, in your searching. So bullfighting might be a good uh, topic if you're, um, you know, searching some Hemingway. Um, uh, some other things uh, might be uh, war in literature or love in literature. Um, so those are all sorts of ways to put it into the context of a topic as well. All right, so search tip number two, know what you're searching. Sometimes in the databases you're searching the full text of an article, so you will find your, uh, your search terms anywhere in that article. 
Um, that sounds pretty good. It can get a little bit overly broad. Um, you know, works of literature are alluded to in all sorts of different contexts. They could be mentioned in a scientific paper, could be mentioned in a um, in a history paper. Um, so full text can can be a good thing, but it also can make your results overly broad. Um, sometimes a database is just searching what librarians call the item record, which is the summary of the article, which contains the title, the author, some subject terms, and other descriptors that help describe the article, but it's not the full text of the article. So um, in a lot of the databases these days, it'll be full text, um, but just pay attention if you see any, indi any indications about what you're searching. Um, it can make things a little bit too broad, um, and you can also adjust your searching uh, if you know what exactly you're searching. So search tip number three is get specific with database tools. All of these databases, uh, Sarah alluded to this just a minute ago, uh, all of these databases are designed for uh, research in mind. We're going to show you several databases that are designed for this literature research. So they will have advanced search features um, that will allow you to search uh, names, of, names of works. It will allow you to search authors easily. It will allow you to search characters easily. Um, they will also have drop-down boxes that will allow you to limit uh, to certain um, certain areas of the data databases, so you can search to author, you can search um, by title, um, that kind of, that kind of um, extra search capability can be very helpful. Um, and you can also expand to full text if you like in some of the drop-down boxes in uh, some of the databases that we're going to look at today. We're also going to show you some kind of generic databases, but there are also ways um, that you can use search terms and advanced search features to make a generic multi-search database um, fit better with your, with your literature topic. OK, so the search tip number four, when is an author not an author? Um, when you're searching for information about authors or um, their literary works, it can be really helpful to do um, an advanced search where you have more parameters you can set and search for your author as the subject. Um, just that kind of delineation or clarification is helpful because sometimes um, when many of us have been taught to use library resources in the past, we might search for the author and just type in our um, type in our author without realizing that's going to take us to the primary source or the author's work. Um, but when we're researching them or their works, again, we're looking for secondary sources. So in that case, they would be the subject. Um, and it'll make a little more sense once we get into some of the databases themselves and, and start to look at it. But um, again, that can be a helpful tip to use um, in the databases because it can take you to results where um, your author's body of work will be the subject. Um, so things about their writing, any kind of style or themes that show up over and over might show up um, in your search results. Um, so yeah, that can be another other tip to kind of keep in mind as you're searching. You'll also see options for uh, to filter your searches by peer review or scholarly works. Um, and in this case, peer review is referring to academic journal articles um, where um, the subject matter expert or professional or, or professor um, who's very knowledgeable within that subject area writes an article, performs, his, their, performs their research, writes their article, sends it to a journal for publication. Um, once the journal receives it, it's then reviewed and it's either published um, or more often sent back to the, um, to the author of the article to uh, make any revisions or make any edits needed before it gets published. Um, this is important to know about because sometimes a professor might have a requirement that you use a few scholarly or peer-reviewed resources. 
And those can be helpful because they've been through those kind of that system of checks. So you can know that it's been reviewed by other scholars in the field and they've agreed that that research is sound and, and should appear in a journal. Um, it can be helpful too to know what to expect when you're looking at those kinds of sources. So sometimes because they are so, or, or because they are more academic in nature, the language might be a little bit more difficult to read or they might be using more um, jargon specific to a particular discipline um, like literary studies. So, um, so just some things to kind of be aware about. They're, they're typically also going to be more specific in nature. So focusing in on a particular analysis of, um, of a work in, a, in the case of a literary example. Um, so that's what that term means if you see it throughout some of the tools that we'll show you today. And then um, you'll also see that a couple of databases just exclusively hold um, scholarly resources. And those are um, JSTOR and Bloom's Literary Reference. Those are going to have um, those are going to have those those resources that, again, have already kind of been vetted and are um, going to kind of meet that requirement. Another search tip is um, to use these these operators and or and not. Um, you can use them um, in advanced search options. So you'll see once we get into some of the tools, they'll have one search box. Um, but often there's an option to choose advanced search where you can start to combine various phrases, terms, um, things like the title of your work and the author's name. So you're getting results where both of those are included can be helpful. You can type these in um, to search boxes if you think it might be helpful, and we'll look at a couple examples of, of um, what that will look like uh, in the slides in just a moment. Okay, so this one is an example of, of how you could use these, these um, operators to change up your search. Um, Many databases or search tools uh, now have some of these built in. So in Google, when we're typing in a phrase, it's adding that and in between each of our words for us. Um, but you can still, and that's probably the one that I still just type in the most out of habit is and. Um, you can use or to expand your, term, your search to include multiple terms. Um, or you can use not if you want to eliminate a search term from your results. So for most of us, and might be all that we need, but these are also other options available to you as you um, try searching on your own. And this is just an example of what one might look for a literary uh, research um, search. So you could include the terms Jane Eyre, and you're including two variations on the author's uh, name, and then eliminating the um, eliminating the word film, so hopefully eliminating any mention of the film. But um, again, you'll see as we kind of dem demo some of these resources that there are multiple ways to go about it. So all of these search tips and tools can, um, can be used or not, and they might work, but it, it, the, the point is to kind of show you lots of tips to try so that if you don't get results the first time, you can try another approach and, and not kind of give up without getting anything useful. All right, great. So now we're going to switch to the live demonstration portion of this uh, presentation. Um, so most of the library resources that you will access are going to be uh, available through the library's website, which is library.gsu.edu. Um, and it's typically very uh, straightforward as far as how to access these. Um, this is the library's homepage. Um, and what we're going to be looking at, there's a couple different ways to find these databases. So 
towards the left side of the middle of your screen, you, we've got uh, some choices that you can make. You can do databases by subject or databases by name. Um, now, we've given you the names of the databases that we've uh, chosen for this presentation, but what I like to often start with is databases by subject and go to English. Um, and this gives you a, a broader uh, perspective on how many different databases we have just for English. Um, so many of these are helpful. Um, the ones that we're going to talk about today, uh, oh, and some of them are extremely specific, um, and we're going to talk about just a couple of them today. Um, the first one we're going to talk about is, or I'm going to talk about, is Bloom's Literature. So I've gone to Databases by Subject and English, and now I'm going to click on Bloom's Literature, uh, which I've already opened here. Um, from home, you will might be prompted, you'll probably pr be prompted for your GSU credentials to log in. Um, these are password protected. Uh, we mentioned, I think Sarah mentioned earlier, that we pay uh, subscription fees for these. So don't be surprised uh, if you get asked for your GSU uh, username and password. That is, that is expected. All right, so here's the uh, home page for Bloom's Literature. Um, you can see already that they have uh, authors, they have works, they have characters um, that you can look through. Um, so already we can tell that this is designed for literature research. Um, there are several tools that you can use in Blooms. Um, we're going to do a simple search in just a second, but under the Browse uh, uh, tab, you have uh, a place to search lists of auth authors, list of works, list of characters. You can look up literary movements or literary themes. They also have primary um, uh, primary uh, cl uh, literary classics in here. So if you need uh, the, to refer back to the primary, the work itself, um, they have quite a few of the classics that are included here. They have a Shakespeare Center. Uh, Blooms has a lot of uh, a lot of articles and a lot of resources on Shakespeare. So they have created a little Shakespeare Center with uh, curated content uh, from many of Shakespeare's, many of Shakespeare's work, works. Um, so we are going to do a simple search, and we're going to do a search for the yellow wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. And I'm going to use quotes around the title to keep that together as a phrase, and I'm just going to do a simple search uh, in Blooms. So here is your result list. You will notice that we have different types of uh, different types of sources. So Blooms defaults to reference sources. So reference sources are going to be some specialized encyclopedias that are include, uh, included in this database. So you can see Encyclopedia of Themes and Literature, for example, Encyclopedia of Feminist Literature. Um, these can be helpful for background reading um, and for getting a, an overview. Um, but what most of your professors are going to want you to look at are the criticism articles, which are under the second tab. Um, like we talked about, the, the criticism will, will be a, 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 a larger analysis of the work, um, depending on uh, the context that they're, they're, they're looking at. So here's your list of criticism for the yellow wallpaper. And you have uh, several different options uh, for articles. Um, you might not see the name of the work in, uh, in the title, um, but it's picked up somewhere in the search results. Um, so in this case with uh, Sandra Cisneros, The House on Mango Street, um, oftentimes you'll see comparisons putting, uh, putting your work into context with other works. So don't be surprised if you don't see the name of your work immediately. Um, it will, it's, it's been captured somewhere in there. So we'll look just at the first result to give you an idea of what these articles looks lo look like. Um, in Blooms, you have the full text immediately available, and you've got your search terms that are highlighted in yellow. So this is too terribly good to be printed, Charlotte, per Charlotte Gilman's The Yellow Wallpaper. Um, so it's a nice detailed article. It's been 
Um, it has citations included, so you can tell that the author did their own homework when they were writing this. It is part of Bloom's literary themes and dark humor. So that could be, uh, if you're just starting, that could be a, a dark humor, could be a, a, a topic that you look into uh, in the yellow wallpaper. Because this is a literature, or because this is a research database, you've got options to help you organize your research uh, across uh, the top here. So you can print it, you can download it, or some of the popular options. You also have a citation tool that will put it in MLA, and that's the new edition of MLA. Um, I will caution you with the uh, the database uh, citations that they are not uh, always correct. As a matter of fact, looking at this, it's formatting the quotations a little oddly. So you have to be careful when you copy and paste this into your Works Cited page to go back uh, and make sure everything uh, is 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 okay with MLA, the, the MLA instructions you get from your instructor or from the MLA um, handbooks. Um, so that's just a caution over all of these databases that we're going to be talking about today. Um, if you're more of an auditory learner, then you can use this database and it, uh, it will machine read it to you. Um, so you can listen to this uh, article if you'd like. Um, so I mentioned already that this, is, this, is a, this was originally published in Bloom's Literary Themes. Um, and you have the table of contents in case you want to look at other articles about dark humor. You've got those available chapter by chapter. This was apparently originally chapter 18 in this book. Um, so there is a quick overview of Bloom's. Um, so again, you can expo explore um, literary movements, for example. So if we look at literary movements, uh, the yellow wallpaper is considered to be kind of an archetype in the Gothic literature. So you can look for articles on Gothic liter literature to put it in the context, in that context. Um, you can look at, at themes, insanity, for example, another theme uh, for uh, a commonly studied theme uh, for yellow wallpapers, insanity, and this places it in the context of Gothic literature. So you can find other ways uh, in these databases to, to approach the work that you're studying. Um, and those are a couple ways that this particular database um, can help out, with that, uh, uh, help out with those aspects. So again, you can go to Browse, go to Literary Movements, um, take a look at some of those. Um, I'm sure you'll be talking about some of these different movements, for example, in your class and some representative uh, examples. Of, um, of how your work might apply to some of those movements. All right, so that is Bloom's. The next database that I'm going to cover, and I'm actually going to go back out to the library homepage just so we get in the practice of doing this. Um, so databases by subject, English, and then I'm going to scroll down to G for Gale Literary Sources. All right. All right, so another one of our uh, databases specifically designed for literary research. Um, we mentioned some of the um, advanced search features. Of course, the database does have a very tempting search box uh, that looks like Google. Google. Um, you're welcome to try that. Uh, you can use the name of your work. Uh, works well in these databases, in this particular database. I'm going to look at some of the advanced search features, however because I want to show you some of the advantages of using uh, a database like this. So here are some of the search boxes um, that we can uh, apply some of our search terms to. So you can do a basic search, with a, which is a keyword, keyword search. You can uh, use the second box, and you've got, you actually have a, a number of different options under, under these boxes, um, but it defaults to the name of the work. So I can put in the name of the work I'm looking for. I'm still going to keep it in quotes to keep it together as a phrase, and it also auto-completes it for you. Um, I like to do uh, my own phrase with the quotes. That tends to work better for me, but you can certainly try either way. So things they carry, it is the name of the work. And then in the person, you can see it says by or about. So it's kind of combining um, primary or secondary there. So you can do the, the author to get primary 
uh, or uh, secondary research under that uh, buyer about. Okay, and you can also switch that to about if you'd like to get just the just the secondary. Um, but pay attention to what these what these fields say. Um, you've got more options. I'm not going to do any of these options right now, but I am going to use these advanced search features here. So I'm going to hit search. And Gale Literary Sources defaults to literary criticism. Um, unlike Bloom's that defaults to reference sources, uh, Bloom's, uh, or excuse me, Gale uh, puts you right into the literary criti the literature criticism. Um, it does also contain biographies. So you can find um, biographies of Tim O'Brien uh, if you want if you need biographical information. It does also have some topic and work overviews. Um, so that's a different, uh, you know, you can get a, a summary of the work itself. Um, you have to be careful with reviews and news. Um, sometimes these will review uh, a particular, um, uh, for like a play, it might uh, do a particular um, uh, setting or a particular run of a play. Um, and that might, may or may not be helpful. Um, to your to your literary criticism paper, so just be careful with some of those. Um, so we're going to go back to the literature criticism. We got 105 hits, so you can see where these identify the article as a critical essay. That's what uh, Gail has uh, tagged these um, in this database. You have the you have the uh, off the, the title of the title of the article. Um, and then you have a very brief description, including a word count, which is sometimes which is sometimes helpful to get those substantive articles. And you can also see where these articles were published. So you'll see titles like short story criticism, contemporary literary criticism, um, and those are all good uh, good sources uh, to use for your for your for your articles. So I'm going to click on, uh, actually first, um, there are ways to limit on the right-hand side. If you have a topic already in mind, you can search within these results, um, let's say for uh, narration or narrator uh, or for a theme that you're looking for um, or for uh, you know the things that carry us about the Vietnam War, so you could search for uh, war. Um, so that will search within uh, within what you've already searched, which is the things they carried. Okay. Um, you can also make sure uh, if you want to make sure that the article is immediately available, you can click on full text. Uh, you also have an option to get the peer-reviewed articles. So if your professor has asked that you get those peer-reviewed scholarly sources, you can do that as well. Um, in Gale that limits you quite a bit, um, but you can check that if you'd like to get a few peer-reviewed journals from this database. You have ideas for other subjects that you could search, so um, you can look for other works by Tim O'Brien are included in here. Uh, I told you it was a Vietnam story, so that of course makes sense. Soldiers, um, so you can look through the subjects that are suggested to narrow to narrow your search as well. Um, so we'll look at one of these articles quickly. Um, this second one looks interesting to me, so we can click on the title, and that brings up the entire article immediately. Now you do again have, and I'm not going to go through these again since they're similar. Um, all of these databases will have something fairly, relatively similar. You've got a citation tool. You can um, save these to your OneDrive, which uh, is available through your GSU email. You can print this, or your GSU email account, I should say. You can print this. You can email this to yourself. Um, that's a feature that I like in a lot of these databases. Uh, you can email these articles to yourself. So if you're, uh, if you're like me and you're doing research and you go from site to site, database to database, you're running different searches, and it's hard to sometimes come back and find where you left off. Uh, or you sometimes you might uh, miss an article because you've forgotten to email it to yourself. So I would encourage you to email some of these articles to yourself. Um, you can download it. Um, and this one, since you can do these in audio, you can download it as an MP3 if you'd like. Um, so there's all sorts of ways uh, to um, 
to narrow down your um, narrow down your your search results and all sorts of tools that you can use to organize your research as you go. All right. All right. So that is a quick uh, uh, overview of Gale. Uh, so you can find some good uh, articles in here. Um, what's inside gives you an idea of the scope of Gale, which covers a lot of different uh, a lot of different sources. So it's a it's a good big database um, that's and has those those advanced search features that can be helpful um, to your assignment. Okay, so I am going to stop sharing and I am going to hand the presentation over to Sarah. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start sharing my screen now, and I'll look at a couple of different um, databases or collections that could can be useful. So let me share my screen first and pull up um, my browser. So I've got the library's website here. Um, Please feel free to let me know if you can't see my, my screen. But I'm going to follow Scott's lead and um, navigate to the resources again through the, through the library's website. This is especially helpful if you're off campus because these links are set up for access to log in. Um, so the first one I'm going to show you is called uh, a database called JSTOR. Um, but for example, if you were at home, and um, you Googled JSTOR, um, there's not really any way for that site to know that you're affiliated, affiliated with G Georgia State. Um, so that's why we're going to go through the, those extra clicks of getting to it through the library's website. So I'm going to do, um, first I'm going to close my email so you all don't see my <laughs> emails pop up. Um, but I'm going to choose Databases by Subject and go to English again. And um, I mentioned the name. It's JSTOR, so I'm just going to scroll until I get to the J's. Click on the title here to open up the database, which I've got ready to go in a, in a new window um, here. So um, the layout should look a little familiar um, in, in terms of what we've looked at already. So uh, there's kind of one main search box. From there, I can type in my search combining different keywords or phrases um, or titles or author names, or I can go to the advanced search underneath and get a few more options um, for combining those um, options in searching or for checking any boxes to filter my results. So those, again, those additional options are there. I'm going to back up um, to the main search box and just start there um, as an, to do an example search. Um, but before I do that, I do want to mention that JSTOR is still a really good, useful source for literary research. Um, but in its description, back on the, the database list um, here, the A to Z list, it's, you might have noticed, too, in the description that it, it, it opens up a little bit in terms of disciplinary focus. So it's related, it's got contents related to the humanities, social sciences, and sciences. So while it does have literary um, research and articles and book chapters, it's also going to have other um, information from other fields. So it's not going to necessarily um, be as intuitive or as focused on literature as Bloom's or Gale were. Um, but I'm just going to start by typing in um, my author's name, so Juno Diaz. And you can see in the, um, there's some suggested searches coming up that can be really useful um, to use. Um, I'm going to keep going and just add in the title of my work, The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wow. And I'm doing the same um, the same um, option 
that we talked about before with the term searching. So I'm just going to see what happens for those. And I hope I spelled everything correctly. All right, let's see what we get. Okay, so I didn't get any results for this search. So what I'm going to do is just remove the title of the work and start by just searching the author. And I don't know, maybe I maybe I had a misspelling in my initial search because I can see for the, the second result listed that it's it's a review of the brief wondrous life of Oscar Wow. Um so if you're like me and, and make <laughs> make typos or make mistakes in your initial search, that's fine. You can always just start uh simplify and then um get, go more more specific from your first list of search results. So um just searching the author's name, I got a decent number of results, so over 400. And then I can use, again, some of the filters that we saw in the other resources to, um, to make it my search, again, a little bit more specific so that I don't have to click through all those pages of results to find useful uh, resources. Um, I can also choose um, the format, so that can be helpful. Um, Again, journal articles will be a little bit more specific, maybe books a little bit more um, comprehensive, and that can also be, those format types can also be helpful if you um, have a requirement from your professor. Um, so I am going to try again and do um, the title of the work in this handy search within my results option and see if I can get it right this time. And let me just try that and see what happens. Okay, so that helped. And now I can see in the first few results that I'm getting, the titles of these articles actually contain um, both the author's name and the title of the work. So they're a little bit more specific and focused on criticizing and analyzing this particular literary uh, work or novel. So. I'm going to choose one as an example, but it's similar to um, what we saw in some of the other databases with the title of the article um, appearing first with a little bit of um, publication information listed beneath it. So an author of the article, the journal, um, a little bit of like the dates, the page numbers. So some of that information that would go into your citation for the, for the article. Um, JSTOR is nice in that it shows you these, these topics or subjects underneath each one, so that can kind of help you determine whether or not it's something you would like to read or would be relevant to your, uh, your research. So I'm going to choose um, the second um, result and click on the title. So this page is, um, again, it's not the article itself. It's some of that publication information. It's giving us um, a little bit more information about what journal this was published in, so the container for this article. Um, it's also hyperlinked, so you can get some more information about that particular journal. So that can be helpful, too, in determining um, what its focus is and what kind of content it publishes. Um, JSTOR has some of those helpful tools, so you can download the PDF version of this article, which I'll do now so we can um, look at an example. And the PDF, if I scroll through, will just be the scanned version um, of the article as it would have appeared in the final publication of the journal. So it's got all the formatting, all the page numbers, um, all that um, information that can be helpful when you're reading through it, citing your sources, things like that. Um, but back on this page with, this, with the kind of record or information about the article, it's got um, a citation feature that you can also look at to get that basic citation. Um, it doesn't have the email function, which is kind of a bummer, but you can download it, um, attach it to an email, upload it into your uh, Google Drive or OneDrive and kind of keep up with it that way. Um, if you wanted to add it to your list, you can create an account, which there's an option up at the top to do that. Um, but that is one additional login or um, 
information or a password to kind of keep track of, but you can do that as an option. Um, and then I'll just talk briefly about these topics again, or in some of the other databases, they might be called subjects. They're all hyperlinked, so you can click on them and go to results that also have those same topics. Um, I also like to include them in my search terms. So if I was focusing on um, maybe Juno Diaz's depiction of a dictatorship in this novel, I could grab that word and add it into my search to see if that helps me get even more focused with my results. Um, so all of this information, even though once you see when you first look at it, it might not seem super useful. It can be. Um, and then you've got the PDF as well to help you, um, you that you can kind of skim through um, and figure out, again, if it's going to be helpful and useful for your research. JSTOR also doesn't have an abstract, which you'll see in some of the, the, the next tool that we look at. Um, last, last thing I'll point out, um, Articles about the same topics, those are kind of like um, if you're shopping online and if you liked this, you might like this other product. So this is kind of the database's way of trying to help you find other relevant resources based on those topics that are assigned or subjects that are assigned to the resource. So again, JSTOR can be helpful. It's going to have a bit of a broader scope in terms of what's included, so not just literary um, results, articles, um, but things from other humanities fields and sciences and social sciences. So that can be helpful, but just know you'll have to be a little bit more precise in how you search it and how you filter those results. So um, I'm going to close all this out and just go back to the library's website here. And so from here we looked at Blooms, we looked at Gale, we looked at JSTOR, and now we're going to um, do some searching within the Discover search box. So a quick note is um, I want to just mention is that Discover is not a database itself. It's not a collection. It's a search engine that is used to search um, as many of those databases that we looked at before and others at once at, as, it, as it possibly can. Um, there are some cases where we might have a collection and those results, those collections are not included in search results, and that's more about publishers and vendors um, not wanting to kind of share their information. So Discover can be a really useful place to search, but there might also be other collections that have useful things um, that you can't get to through it. So it's still useful. Um, to go to some of those individual databases, especially the ones that we looked at today that you know are good for literary um, topics and, and focuses. Um, so here, I just want to show an example uh, search. Um, I'm going to do a literary search, um, but I want to show uh, kind of an example of that the phrase searching. So. Um, Another a short story um, that I'll use an ex as an example is Gorilla My Love by Tony Kate Bambara. So if I typed in just the title of the work, no quotes to keep it together as a phrase, no author's information, no additional words that kind of help determine the context of these words in, in my search, um, you'll see that I'll get quite a bit of results. So I got um, almost 37,000, um, which is in some ways that's great that there are that many resources out there. But you know we can't look through all of those and sift through all of those to see what's going to be most relevant or useful. Um, so the first few results are actually the primary source itself, so this collection of short stories. Um, and then you can see based on the icons within the search results that there are different um, types of formats included. So I've got a couple of books, a journal article, um, but then as we kind of scroll down, even within the first um, page of results, I'm getting some that maybe aren't relevant or that maybe just have those keywords that I searched. Um, so again, all we have is the title and a bit of publication information beneath it. 
so it's a little bit uh, more difficult to determine if this is focused on my research or my, my literary work. So it can be helpful to come back up to my search box, add some quotes around that, and type in the name of the, the author maybe as another option. But we can just do the phrase search first and see how that um, limited our results down to about 400. So it got rid of all, most of them. Um, and we've got 400 results that include that phrase. Um, so that's, again, just another way to, to make your search a little bit more specific um, so you can spend your time actually looking at resources that are going to be more, more relevant for you. Um, the same tools and filters are available in Discover, so you can choose um, the format type. Um, if you need those scholarly or peer-reviewed articles, you can choose that option. Um, you could play it with the date range if you need something published a little bit more recently. Um, and then the last one I'll point out is the subject option. I'm going to open this up to show all of them. I really like this, uh, this one. It's similar to the topics that we saw in JSTOR. So these resources have kind of been tagged with these different subjects. Um, but to me, it's helpful to use to come up with other search terms, other phrases, other ideas for focusing my research. Um, so for example, if you wanted to focus on black feminism within Tony Cade Bambara's work, you could choose that as a subject, or you could come up and put it, drop it in your search box. So again, lots of different ways to approach it. Not really any right or wrong way, um, but these are all just tools kind of designed to help throughout the process. Um, so just really briefly, I'll show an example article in Discover. Uh, it can be, if you're looking for articles, you'll want to pay attention to that for the PDF full text or any mention of the words full text to know that you can actually access the article. And then it's also a filter on the, um, the left side of the screen. So if you want to make sure you can get to the results right away, you can choose that option. So same idea, I'm going to select the title. I've got um, a little bit more publication information. This one's coming from the journal African American Review. Um, so all of this is helpful, and I've got tools to send this to myself via email, save it to my Google Drive um, so that I can kind of keep up with it as I go. And because this article has the full text displayed in HTML, I can just view it on this website here, or I can go over to the PDF option open that and see it again kind of formatted and typeset how it appeared in the in the journal. Um, the last thing I'll point out about this, sometimes within this article page is where you might see, or this record page is where you might see an abstract or um, something that lets you know what the article will cover. Um, this one doesn't appear to have one probably because it's pulling from another database from JSTOR, the one we just looked at. Um, but uh, in, in other cases, you may see an abstract, which can also kind of help you save some time in determining what's going to be useful for you. Um, so again, just to kind of summarize um, as I stop sharing my screen, just that we looked at JSTOR, which was a little bit broader, and then we looked at Discover, which searches pretty much everything. And those are all different tools you can use depending upon the context of your search. Um, and in some cases, it may just be easier to go straight to those literary databases and, and, and use them. So I'm going to, um, I guess I will pass the ball, the, the, presentation mode back to Scott, who's going to advance us to our last slide, and we can just um, wrap up from there with just a couple of logistical last-minute things. Okay, great. So the last thing I want to touch on is um, 
um, we want we we value your feedback. We are always looking for ways to improve these to make them a little bit more engaging. So feel free to um, give us your feedback at this URL. Um, we provided our contact information at the beginning of the of the webinar. So feel free to email either of us with any questions that you might have or um, issues that might come up it, while you're researching. And then um, there are also many ways to get in touch with us through the library's website. So feel free to start a chat um, session, visit us at any campus library in person, um, call us. Um, again, we're here, as Scott mentioned earlier, to help out with, um, with th these issues and with your research. So please don't hesitate to reach out. And um, with that, I'll open it up to any questions. And if not, thank you very much for attending or listening to this recording.